guys? This is Ryan Johnson with MoneyBass.com and this week for our Tuesday and Thursday tutorial, we will be going over the sonar and down imaging settings. So let's go ahead and get these units booting up. And let me go ahead and do both of these units this time. And guys, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. We're trying to get this out um, so that we can continue to help each other. You want to keep an eye on the screen so whenever it gets to the section where it says hit the menu button, you want to make sure you hit that menu button. Hit the menu button, and that way it'll give you the option to go into simulator mode. So you want to put both of these in simulator mode. And this one over here, I missed it. I didn't hit it in time, so I'll reboot that one. Um, but once it gets to that, then you hit the exit key. And now you are in um, the simulation mode. So let me go ahead and start this one up again. And I will pay attention so I don't miss the, the button whenever it gets to the um, menu button again. All right, let's see. It should be coming up. All right, there it goes. We hit the menu button and then we will go to simulator so you go down and hit the right arrow key and now we just hit the exit button and that will put it in simulator mode so today like i said we will be going over the sonar settings so on this one let's go ahead and go to the sonar screen and one of the shortcuts that you can do guys is hit this menu button up i mean the view button up here hit it and hold it in and then you'll get the view screen Go to sonar, hit the right arrow key, and then we want to go down to sonar. So we have DISI, so we're just looking for the 2D view. Oh, there it is, it's at the top. So we'll go straight to this 2D view, and that's a shortcut. Uh, actually, I missed it. Hold in the view button, sonar, 2D. There we go. So that goes straight to the 2D button. And now let's go to the on this one over here, the other way that I think most people do it is they will either hit this view button or they will hit the exit button and that will just scroll through the different screens. So you can do it that way, it just takes longer. Um, and we're going to the down imaging screen on there. So this one over here, there's the down imaging screen. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started real quick. Real quick, you always wanna make sure you go into setup and make sure this is set on custom. Right now it's on angler. So you want it on custom so that it will give you more options. So one of the things that I wanted to go into is once you're on this screen, you just hit the menu button once and that will bring up the basic settings that you will have for your sonar. So under these settings, of course, you're gonna have your sensitivity and let's just play around with these guys. And basically this tutorial is just to go over some of these basic settings for you guys, something that you can do at home. If you do not have your boat where you keep it at home, I will be doing another tutorial where I'll show you a setup to where you can connect your unit directly to an outlet in the home using a converter. And that way you can practice this while you're at home. You can set waypoints and things like that in preparation for your next fishing trip or next tournament or whatever you have in mind for um, why you want to go ahead and um, work on this at home. So sensitivity, let's take a look at that. Um, actually, let me just show you this first. So on these sonar colors, this is the screen that I like for me because with that black background, for me, it allows the everything that I see on here to pop better. Some people will like um, just the regular setting. So that number one palette, that is a setting that a lot of people use. But once again, I would just scroll through here and use a setting that based on how well you can um, differentiate between different items. So you see bait fish, you see frit fish, you see structure, cover, everything like that. So whatever palette allows you to see that the best is what I would set that on. So um, there should be, I think, 11, 12. Wow, okay. So there's 19 settings on that that you can go through and just pick the one that you like best. For me, I like palette number six. All right, so let's go back up to sensitivity. When, when I am setting up my sensitivity, what I do is I'll kick it all the way down. And as you see, it, it kind of gets rid of things on there and then I'll kick it all the way up. And what it does in the opposite direction, it'll get too much distortion in it. So you want to put it, well for me, I put it right where that distortion kind of kicks out, but it still allows me to see the details on the individual items that I want to see. 
All right, so now let's go down to contrast. Contrast the same thing. I'll kick that all the way one way. And as you see, it kind of makes it to where you don't see things as well. Let's kick it all the way back down in the other direction. It'll start getting distorted. So we just want that right in the in-between area, wherever you notice that everything starts looking very crisp. All right, so the next thing is the lower range. So with the lower range, when some people will keep this on auto. So if you put it on auto, that's basically going all the way down to the left. When you put it on auto, that will adjust on its own while you're out on the water. Me, I never use the auto setting because I like fishing specific um, water depths. So I will always set this at a water depth that's a little um, closer to the range that I actually intend to fish. So let's go ahead and set this up on, based on where the bottom is at on the simulation mode. So there we go, it's at 45 feet. So I will put it around 50 feet. So that way it will will allow me to see the bottom just a little bit. All right, um, chart speed. Um, with the chart speed, this one can be very useful for the simple fact that depending on the speed, it will determine the clarity of the picture that you see. And for instance, let's just go all the way up to 10 real quick. So you see how this looks right here when it was on, I believe it was on three. With that 10 setting, things are gonna go by a lot faster and it's not gonna show as much detail. There'll be a little more graininess to your picture. And let's just see whenever it starts coming back up. And also what it does is it will show you things on a lot more of the real time as it's happening. All right, so here we go. So now those same humps, you see how it makes them actually wider than what they were before on the lower setting because it's going by slower, it's gonna make it more detailed and it'll change the, you know, just change the shape of that structure. But generally I like to keep that around three, three or four, because I wanna set it to closer to the speed that I'm idling at on the lake. All right, so the next thing that I will do, um, well actually, let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. So now you see once I put it on three, it has slowed down a lot and you can see how it takes its time in drawing out the detail. All right, going down, we already covered this, the sonar colors, trolling motor controls. Um, that just allows you to control your trolling motor from the unit itself. I don't ever really use that because I have a remote and basically I, I barely ever use the remote either. But anyways, that is what you can use that for. Um, and all of that is just by hitting the menu button once. So the other thing to keep in mind is if you hit the menu button twice and what you will see is the menu up here and you want to go over to sonar. So let's go over to sonar and you'll see the different settings under here, display spectrum, um, then 2D switch fire, clear mode. I generally keep that on clear mode, but the options on that are going to be, let's just go down to that real quick. You have clear mode and you have max mode. Max mode, as you can see, will have a little bit more of the, um, I guess clutter, or it won't be as crisp, but you can still go in and adjust it. But for me, I just like keeping that on clear mode. All right, so the other item that you want to pay attention to under the sonar settings is RTS window. Now that's something that I always leave turned on because I use it, especially whenever I'm drop shotting or something like that, where I need to see um, it, see what's happening in more of a real time situation. So what that RTS window does is if you can see this right here, that is the RTS window, which shows the real time um, screen display of what is about to come on the screen. So this is actually live right here. Once it gets over here, it's no longer live. It is something in the past, but it'll give you an indication of what you're about to see. So even if you're dropping your lure down or something like that, you will see it actively falling as it comes down and you can actually see the fish chasing and things like that. So this area right here to me is very important because it will show you um, just real time live things that are actually happening. Um, in order to see that, you want to make sure that you put it in 
custom mode and don't leave it in angler mode because that may not be an option that shows up. But for RTS window, I normally keep that on, on full. All right, and that is it for the sonar side. So um, pretty much the down imaging side is the same. Let's just take a look at that one over here. So again, you just hit the menu button. I'm sorry, I keep saying menu button. You hit the view button, hold that in, go to sonar, hit the right arrow key, and then we'll go down to DI view, hit the right arrow. And on this, obviously, since we've already done it on the sonar side, um, it's pretty much the same. You just hit the menu button once and we can go in here and clean this up. So we'll go into sensitivity. We'll kick that down some, then we'll go over to contrast. Let's see if we kick that down. It kind of takes away what you're seeing on the screen. If you go too far, it'll get just distorted. So we want to put that right in the middle someplace where it's kind of clean for us, but doesn't uh, show too much clutter and distortion on the screen. All right, so lower range, chart speed, the different color palettes, the dynamic contrast, all of those are pretty much the same that was on the other side. Eye pilot controls. So the settings and everything are pretty much the same. So this is something that I, that I would suggest you guys go in and play around with. But let me show you a few tricks that you can use with these settings in order to kind of hone in or get a better view of things that you want to take a look at. So now let's say that you're looking at this area right here and it's a brush pile or something like that. You think you may see some fish down in that area. So what you can do is move this arrow key over to the area that you have in mind that you want to take a look at and hit the plus button, this plus button right here. And what that does is it will zoom in. So now you can use your, your arrow um, button up here and move this menu around to take a closer look at the things that you want it to zoom in to see. So that's a pretty neat feature. Um, if there's an area that you have found that is a good location where you have been finding fish on multiple occasions, you may want to go out there one day and just get a better scan, a better idea of what you're seeing down there. Just take the time to go down there, scan that, um, zoom in use, you know, using this feature. And that's something that you can actually use the record setting. So we'll get into that on another tutorial also, guys. But you can record um, your, your uh, settings, your the things that you're viewing and stuff like that while you're out on the lake so that you can view it at home later and go in and place waypoints and things like that if you don't have time to do it while you're out on the lake. All right, so next, let's exit out of that. Another thing that you can do, let's go to the menu button once. Actually, let's pause the screen again by just moving the arrow that arrow key so that'll pause it and now we hit the menu button once and we can go down to and this is another thing that can help you zoom in to a specific area that you may be targeting where you want to see it so we go to the lower range so we can play with that lower range so as we go up in lower range you can see how it kind of starts making that picture smaller but let's go the opposite way it'll make that picture bigger Okay, let's go back over to the sonar side real quick so I can show you the second part to, to that setting that I was wanting to show you. But let's just go down to the lower range. Let's kick that back up some. And so with this part, what you want to do is with that lower range, let's say that you want to focus in on this particular area right here. So what you can do is, let's pause that screen again. Then what we'll do is come down here and we will hit the menu button once for the lower range we want to go down so we, we can zoom in on that and make it like the focal point on the screen then we can also go down on this side and you'll see upper range level and what that's going to do is cut out all of this extra up here so let me show you what that does upper range so now let's cut out that upper range and as you can see it's just making that more detailed to where you're focusing in on that area. That's another good feature that's useful. And like I said, take the time to go over these things so that you can learn how to use this to your benefit out on the, out on the lake. So a lot of guys bypass this stuff or may not even know about it. But now that you know, you can go ahead and take advantage of this, guys. All right. And let me see the other thing that I wanted to show you. Let's kick back over here to the down imaging side. So with down imaging, let's hit the menu button once and go back to lower range. 
and let's kick that back down so that we can get a better view of everything on the screen. Okay, so now let's go menu button twice and we will go to the, let's see, sonar settings. So under here, as you can see, this down imaging is on 455 kilohertz. So you have different options. So just kind of watch the color of the screen behind here, but it's on 455, which you want to use if you're scanning a large area. So that's if you want to see things that are farther out. Then we have 800, which is mid range, and you kind of see how things change a little bit. And then you can go to mega imaging, which will be for things that are closer in that you want to see in more detail. So I, I yeah, you can kind of see that better detail like that right there. So there we go. Those are the three frequencies that you can um, that you can go through for that down imaging. So let's exit back out and let me show you the shortcut to doing that. All you do is go over here to this check button, that check button right there. And all you do is just press that and just watch the numbers down here. Right now it's on mega imaging, so it will cycle through those settings for you. So now we're back at the 455 and that's just the median um, number for that. Hit it again, we're in the 800 range. Hit it again, we're on the mega imaging range. So all I'm doing is just pressing that button and it will cycle through that. So while you're actively scanning, you can use that as a shortcut to try to get the best image depending on the distance you are from the structure or the cover that you're scanning. All right, guys, wanted to try to make this video as quick as possible for you, but give you guys some things to kind of work on, to look into and see how you can use those to your advantage. Please, once again, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, guys. And another uh, suggestion is by hitting that like button, not only does it help me, it will help the YouTube algorithm. It will give you the option to see more of these type of videos that will help you out on the lake. But that's it for now, guys. Leave any questions, comments, suggestions, or anything like that down in the comment section. Always be sure to read the description. See you guys on the next one. On a quick note, before we get into this, I try to keep these videos short for you guys, but like I say, putting in this little bit of time, 10 to 20 minutes on each one of these sessions, the knowledge that you gain will definitely help you out on the water. Do not skip through the video because there's bits and pieces in here. Although some of this stuff you may know, there's some things in here that you may not know that may be the key to enhancing your fishing experience when you're out on the water, guys.